In this video, we're going to be covering parabolas. Just a quick disclaimer, this is the first of two videos I'm making on parabolas. In this video, we're going to be covering the basic characteristics of parabolas, as well as the standard form of a parabola. Now, if you want to learn about the vertex form of a parabola, then definitely check out the second video, which I'll have linked in the top right of the screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump right in. Let's start off by talking about the standard form of a parabola, which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are just numbers. They're called coefficients. Now, as we go through the various characteristics of parabolas, let's refer to these two examples. First, we have the parabola y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 2. And second, we have the parabola y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. And so right off the bat, you can see that parabolas are U-shaped curves. Now, the biggest difference between the two parabolas I've drawn is that the one on the left opens upward, and the one on the right opens downward. Now, what determines whether a parabola opens upward or downward is a, the coefficient of the x-squared term. If a is positive, that is, if a is greater than 0, then the parabola opens upward. So, for example, if we consider the parabola on the left, a, which is the coefficient of the x-squared term, is 1, and 1 is positive, and so the parabola opens upward. Now, in the other case, where a is negative, that is, where a is less than 0, the parabola opens downward. And that's what we see with the parabola on the right. a is negative 2, which is less than 0, and so the parabola opens downward. Now, the next thing to consider would be the vertex of the parabola. For a parabola that opens upward, the vertex is at the minimum point. So for this parabola, the vertex would be here, with the coordinates 2, comma, negative 2. And for a parabola that opens downward, the vertex is at the maximum point. So in this case, that would be the point negative 1, comma, 1. But now, if we're given the equation of a parabola in standard form, how do we find the coordinates of the vertex? Well, you can find the x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola using the formula minus b over 2a, where b and a come from the standard form equation. Once you have the x-coordinate of the vertex, then you plug in that x value into the equation to get the corresponding y value. Let's work through that process with our two examples. So we established that for the parabola on the left, a is equal to negative 1, b, which is the coefficient of the x term, is negative 4. Remember that the x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola is negative b over 2a, so we have negative of negative 4 divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 1. Negative of negative 4 is 4, and if we divide that by 2, we get that the x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola is 2. Now to get the y value for the vertex, we plug in the x value into the right-hand side of our equation, and if we do that, we get x squared, so 2 squared, minus 4 times x, so 4 times 2, plus 2, which is 4 minus 8 plus 2, which is negative 4 plus 2, or negative 2. And by putting these two pieces of information together, we can show that the vertex of this parabola is indeed at the point 2 comma negative 2. Now, for our second example, we've established that a is negative 2. Remember that b is the coefficient of the x term. So in this case, that's negative 4. The x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola can be found using the formula minus b over 2a. So in this case, we have negative of negative 4 divided by 2 times a, so 2 times negative 2. Negative of negative 4 is 4, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So we have 4 divided by negative 4, so negative 1. Now to find the corresponding y value for the vertex, we have to plug in negative 1 into the right-hand side of our equation. If we do that, we get negative 2 times x squared, so negative 1 squared, minus 4 times x, so 4 times negative 1, minus 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, so we have negative 2 times 1, so negative 2, 
minus 4 times minus 1 is just 4, so plus 4, and then minus 1, which is 1. And if you put these two pieces of information together, you get that the vertex of this parabola is indeed at the point negative 1, 1. Now let's consider parabolas from more of a definitional standpoint. By definition, a parabola is a curve where any point is an equal distance away from a point known as the focus and a horizontal line known as the directrix. Now let's start off by discussing the focus. The focus is a point that is always within the parabola. So for a parabola that opens upward, it's going to be above the vertex, and for a parabola that opens downward, it's going to be below the vertex. For parabolas that open upward or downward, the focus will always have the same x-coordinate as the vertex. So maybe for this parabola, the focus might be somewhere here, and for this one, it might be here. But that's just a really rough estimation. How do we find the exact coordinates of the vertex? Well, that's where the formula a is equal to 4p comes into play where p is the focal distance, and all the focal distance is, is the distance from the vertex to the focus. Now let's apply this formula and let's start with the example on the left. We've established that a is equal to 1, so 1 is equal to 4p, where p is the distance from the vertex to the focus, if we divide by 4 on both sides, we get that p is equal to 1 fourth. But how do we interpret this? All the 1 fourth means is that the focus is 1 fourth above the vertex. The vertex has the coordinates 2 comma negative 2, which means the focus has the coordinates 2 comma negative 2 plus 1 fourth, so 2 comma negative 7 fourths. So on our graph, that would be somewhere here. Now let's talk about the directrix. So the directrix is a horizontal line that's always going to be outside the parabola. So if your parabola opens upward, the directrix is going to be below it. And if your parabola opens downward, the directrix is going to be above it. Remember that any point on the parabola must be an equal distance away from the focus and the directrix. We just found out that the focus was one fourth above the vertex. And so this means the directrix must be one fourth below it. The vertex has the y-coordinate negative 2, and that means the directrix has the equation y is equal to negative 9 fourths. So that would be this line right here. And so to put all this together, if we choose any point along our curve, then that point must be an equal distance away from the focus and the directrix. So for example, if we consider this point right here, then this distance, the distance from the point to the focus, and this distance, the distance from the point to the directrix would be equal. And the same goes for every single point on the curve. All right, now let's quickly run through the same sort of process for the second example, y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. Let's start off by finding the coordinates of the focus, and we're going to do that using the formula a equals 4p. a is negative 2, so negative 2 equals 4p. And if we divide by 4 on both sides, we get that p is equal to negative 1 half. And how do we interpret this? Well, all this means is that the focus is 1 half below the vertex. That negative sign corresponds to being below the vertex, while positive is above. The vertex of this parabola is at the point negative 1, 1. And if the focus is 1 half below that, then it must have the coordinates negative 1, 1 minus 1 half. So the focus is the point negative 1, 1 half. So that would be right here. Now let's think about the position of the directrix. If the focus is one half below the vertex, then the directrix must be one half above the vertex. And so the directrix is the horizontal line y is equal to three halves. Now that I've cleared up our graphs a little bit, let's talk about the y-intercept and the axis of symmetry. So starting off with the y-intercept, the y-intercept for a parabola given in standard form is the point 0, comma, c. And let's think about why that is. Well, the y-intercept is where the curve intersects the y-axis, and that's always going to be where x is equal to 0. And to find the corresponding y-value, we have to plug in 0 into the right-hand side of our equation. And if we do that, if we plug in 0 for x, we get that y is equal to c. And that's why the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, c. So if we consider the parabola on the left, 
c is equal to 2, and that's why the y-intercept is the point 0, 2. And for the parabola on the right, c is equal to negative 1. So the y-intercept for this curve is the point 0, negative 1. Now the final thing I want to touch on is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex of the parabola and splits it into two equal halves. So for the parabola on the left, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x is equal to 2. And for the parabola on the right, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x is equal to negative 1. And so as you can see, the axis of symmetry always has the same x value as the vertex. Now with that introduction out of the way, let's try graphing a parabola given its equation in standard form. Alright, so here's the example. We want to do a complete sketch of the parabola y is equal to negative 4x squared plus 8x minus 2. Now, let's start off by finding the vertex of this parabola. Recall from the previous slide that the x-coordinate for the vertex of a parabola can be found using the formula minus b over 2a, where b and a come from the standard form equation. Recall that b is the coefficient of the x term, so in this case it's 8, so we have minus 8 divided by 2 times a, and a is the coefficient of the x squared term, which for this equation is negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, so we have negative 8 over negative 8, which is 1. Now to find the y value of the vertex, we need to take the x value, which we found was 1, and plug that in to the right-hand side of our equation. If we do that, we get negative 4 times x squared, so times 1 squared, plus 8 times x, so plus 8 times 1, minus 2. Now if we simplify this a little bit, we have negative 4 plus 8, minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, or 2. And if we put this information together, we get that the vertex of this parabola is at the point 1, 2. Now let's think about whether this parabola opens upward or downward. a is negative 4, and recall that if a is negative, then the parabola opens downward. And if the parabola opens downward, then the vertex is a maximum. Now let's think about the y-intercept. Recall that the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, c. Remember, c is the constant term in our standard form equation, so in this case it's negative 2, and that means the y-intercept for this parabola is the point 0, comma, negative 2. And now we have enough information to graph our curve. We know the vertex is at the point 1, comma, 2, so that's right here. We also know that the curve passes through the point 0, negative 2, since that's a y-intercept. So our vertex is at the point 1, 2. And notice that if we take a one-unit step to the left from our vertex, our y-value becomes negative 2. And since parabolas are symmetric, this means when we take a one-unit step to the right from our vertex, our y-value must be negative 2 as well. So this point must also be on our curve. Now that we have these three points, we should be able to draw a pretty good sketch of the parabola. Remember that a is negative, so this parabola is going to open downward. So ultimately, our curve will look something like this. Alright, so now that we have this basic sketch done, let's find the coordinates of the focus and the equations for the directrix and the axis of symmetry. To find the coordinates for the focus, we have to use the formula a equals 4p. A is equal to negative 4, so we have negative 4 is equal to 4p. And if we divide by 4 on both sides, we get that p, which is the focal distance, is equal to negative 1. And how do we interpret that? Well, that means that the focus is one unit below the vertex. The vertex of this parabola is at the point 1, 2, and if the focus is one unit below that, then its coordinates must be 1, 1. So our focus is right here. I also went ahead and added labels for the vertex and the y-intercept in our diagram. Now let's think about the equation for the directrix. If the focus is one unit below the vertex, then the directrix must be one unit above it, and so the directrix is going to be this line right here. The line with the equation y is equal to 3. Remember that every point on the curve must be an equal distance away from the focus and the directrix, so if the vertex is one unit away from the focus, then the directrix must be one unit away as well. Now the last thing that's left to do is to find the axis of symmetry. 
Remember that the axis of symmetry will always just have the same x value as the vertex. So in this case, the axis of symmetry is this vertical line that passes through the vertex, the focus, and is perpendicular to the directrix. And this line has the equation x is equal to 1. All right, so there you have a complete sketch of the parabola y is equal to negative 4x squared plus 8x minus 2. All right, so that's it for this video. If it did help you out at all, please be sure to leave a like. And if you want to be notified when I post the rest of the videos in this course, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.